All right, guys, the old 7.3 F450 here is getting the ultimate upgrade today. I, I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. I have been planning for this day since, well, before I bought this truck. And what we're about to do in this video is a huge, huge part of the reason I bought this truck to start with. All right, let me show you what it is that I am just beside myself excited about. You ready? Three, two, one, ta-da. Isn't it pretty? I think it's pretty. Now, I know what some of you may be wondering. Blake, you've got two flatbeds. You've got a service truck with a full-size utility body on it. What does this offer that you don't already have in another truck? Well, this allows me to let one truck do the job of two right now. At first glance, this may just look like a utility body, but the key thing here that I cannot do with a utility body is that right there, that is a gooseneck trailer ball. A full-size service truck like my yellow one, you're gonna have toolboxes that come up to about right here and all the way back, and you really cannot tow a gooseneck trailer with those boxes. The trailer tongue will hit the sides of the boxes. It's a little tight and a little sketchy if you stay on paved roads. If you're like me, going off paved roads, onto ranches, job sites, stuff like that, it is a disaster waiting to happen. The tongue is gonna hit the box. You're gonna damage for sure the truck, maybe the trailer. This resolves that. Now, unlike a regular flatbed, we have got a ton of storage on this thing. On my flatbeds, I've got underbody boxes on both sides. Over here, we've got an underbody box. We've got a box for long stuff. If we come up here to the front, we've got a cabinet. Look at that. See all that storage in there? In the cabinet, we've got one, two, three, four swing out trays. And look at that. Some of you know what this is. Some of you don't, but I'm about to show you. This right here is the remote control for this right here. This is a hydraulic pump. Now, Blake, why do you need a hydraulic pump on a truck bed? Because of that, that H-frame right there, up over and there, has two holes in it, and those holes are where you would attach hay bale spears. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a bale bed. Uh, if you don't know what a bale bed is, the way these things work is you attach a bale spear here, a bale spear there, with this controller, when it's mounted on the truck and powered to that pump, this piece here will actually fold down behind the rear bumper and you will back up to a hay bale, round barrel, square bale, whatever, slide the spears into it, press the up button, fold that up and it will pick the hay bale up and carry it right across the back here and you can use it to transport hay bales and feed livestock. All right, so this bed is pretty used and not perfect. It's got a few things we're gonna have to fix after we get it mounted on the truck. So let me take you around it, give you a better look at everything we have here and show you some of the things that are going to need to be fixed. So let's start on this side right here. As we come over here, you can see the weather stripping is pretty damaged. This hinge over here is actually broken, which is not ideal but this is an incredibly well-built bed because every single hinge has a grease fitting on it. And that's something you don't find on a whole lot of beds. We raise this up. We have a gigantic storage compartment in here. And both of these gas springs that are supposed to hold this up are completely shot. They're not holding anything. Up here, we don't even have gas springs to hold this open, but we've got this big bay to put stuff in. And then in our front cabinet here, the latch itself is, uh, well, this probably isn't how it came from the factory. And the gas shock itself is super, super sticky. Like it is taking some fair effort to get that open. But we've got four more swing outs. Underneath the swing outs, we've got, what is that? Behind the swing outs, we've got a, a sandwich meat lid. TV dinner and 
Pop-Tart bites, are you kidding me? This stuff is not planted. I took this bed off of a truck. The guy I bought it from, uh, he bought the truck with the bed on it. He was doing hot shot transport and a bed like this weighs about 3,000, 3,500 pounds. I don't know the exact weight of this bed, but your average flatbed is about 1,000 pounds. This has a lot more steel in it than your average flatbed. Uh, this thing is super, super solidly built, but I have no idea who built it. I have crawled all over this thing in every cabinet underneath it. I can't find any kind of ID tag, data tag, anything that says who manufactured it. I've looked at all the big brands, CM, Northstar, Butler, Bessler, Western Welding, and nobody has a bed on their website or in their catalog that looks like this. So if you know who built this bed, please, please comment down below because I would love to find out who made this thing. But back here at the back, yeah, check this out. Not only do we have our bale spear, this plate down here, that's where the trailer plug goes, but this, Check out that drawer. That comes out probably three and a half, four feet. And it goes up in there another foot and a half, maybe two and a half feet. You can store all kinds of stuff in this thing. I'm, I'm just beside myself. Oh yeah, back here while we're, while we're at the back. There's one drawer that comes out of our rear bumper. Come around here. There's another drawer that comes out of our rear bumper. I, I'm just super excited for this thing. I finally have way more storage than I could really ever get on a standard flatbed. All right, so now that you guys kind of have seen the bed and know why I'm so excited, Let's get the 450 in here. Let's get the old flatbed off and start putting this thing on. All right, guys, we're getting things set up here and changing out truck beds isn't super easy. It's not super hard. We're gonna start down here, focus, there we go. We gotta get all our wiring disconnected. We got this wiring that comes down here to the trailer plug. Then we've got the actual bed wiring here and whatever this, conglomeration of nonsense is that we'll get to figure out. So our wiring is gonna have to be taken loose. The receiver hitch here is actually separate from this bed. So it's gonna be have to take, be taken off once we get the bed itself off. And then up here, we have our fuel filler. And unfortunately, when they put this bed on, they welded this one into this bed. So we're gonna have to figure out how to cut that. But for now, we'll just disconnect the hoses off of it and then pull the bed mounting bolts and then pick this bed up with the lift. <laughs> Let me show you guys specifically what I'm watching here. This middle bracket that they've got on there, it, it, I was afraid it was gonna hit our airbag mount, but we might be okay. I'm gonna have to jockey the front of the bed toward us a little though. I do think it's gonna look all right. So we are on, but we are not mounted. It's just kind of sitting here. You can see the front is definitely higher than the back. We got to get our brackets built. I'll bring you guys down here under it. And you can see at the front, right there where the light is, there's about a two to two and a half inch gap that's going to close up 
because this bed is so heavy toward the back, it's touching back here and it's not touching up there. So we're gonna have to raise up the back a little bit to get the front to come down and then figure out our mounting bracket situation. I was really concerned these center brackets were gonna hit the airbags, but they do sit just about perfectly right in front of them. So that's nice. All right, we got the bed sitting on the truck. Now we gotta keep it there. Let me show you how we're building our mounting brackets. We've got, this is, this might even be five eighths. This is either half inch or five eighths by two and a half or three inch steel. We've drilled our five eighths holes in the bottom here where we're gonna bolt it to the frame of the truck. I tell you what, if you are drilling big holes, there is absolutely nothing better than a mag drill. They are literally designed for really exactly what we're doing here, big holes, in pretty big steel. If we crawl under here, you can see there is an old bracket we're not gonna use. We are gonna be welding our new brackets. Uh, we're gonna put a center bracket right here going up, and we're gonna add one at the front, one at the back. Then we're gonna do a little more bracing at the back, but we'll talk about that later. Have you ever heard of the 80-20 rule? It's something like, the first 80% of the work takes 20% of the time and the last 20% of the work actually takes 80% of the time. Well, that's, that's about where we are with this. It doesn't look like a lot has changed, but it has. We have got all of our bed mounts laid out and secured in place well enough. Got everything prepped so that I am about to roll up under here and start tacking things together. So we're at the wiring stage now, and I want you guys to see this as I'm pulling it out. All this red dirt and clay and whatever else. This is, uh, this is gonna be fun. I have determined this truck was absolutely wired with an old household extension cord frankly, maybe a new household extension cord when they put it in, but it's not anymore. So the entire bed is gonna need to be rewired because there are butt splices and scotch locks all over. And with that kind of dirt, I mean, just looking in here, that's, yeah, this, this light couldn't have been working. That is corroded and broken just right out of the gate. I'll show you guys right here. Which wire was it? This wire, this black wire. Yeah, look at green and corroded and pulled right out of that butt splice right there. So that's good to know. Whole bed's gonna need to be rewired, but for tonight, I just need enough lights on it to be able to drive it home. Well, the bed is on and the lights do work. But we're not done yet. Uh, the bale spear mechanism has still gotta be hooked up. It does not work. The fuel filler over here, I've got the pipe just temporarily held up with a bungee strap. We gotta get that resolved. The bed itself needs some help. A lot of these latches are not, uh, not bad, but not great. They do work, but several of them are loose. Several of them are a little catchy. There's not, as you can see over there by that one that's bent and mangled, there's not a gas spring on this bed that I have found that actually works correctly. If they're not broken, they're rusted. If they're not rusted, they're just worn out and won't hold the lids up. So we gotta get that fixed if I don't break my arm trying to get this one to lay flat. Um, these latches need to be adjusted. As you can see there, that should not be quite so loose and floppy. Over here, this box, the weld on this hinge is broken. I haven't fixed that yet. One thing I wanna point out, this is a really high quality bed. You can see every one of these hinges has grease fittings made into it. You really don't see that on a lot of mass produced 
price point produced beds. That's a really nice feature. Uh, we got to add more work lights. I want some work lights on the headache rack. We'll probably add some back here somewhere. Not on top though, because the bale spear. Once we get the bale spear functioning, anything sitting on top, those hay bales are just gonna knock right off and break. Don't wanna do that. All of that stuff is gonna be in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe. And if you've watched this long, hit the like button. It really does help the channel out. It helps other people see this video. And if you want to see stuff like this more as it's happening, follow me on Instagram because I've been posting pictures of this for the last few days and it may be a week to a week and a half before this video is up. So if you want things a little more current and a little more almost live, make sure you do that. Thank you for watching and more later. That is a really good looking truck. I am super happy with how that turned out.